Hello there. Hi. It's all coming together. Kelly, how are you? How is uh, I'm okay. I, I had a little trouble getting in, but uh, and now I'm not on video. So let's get this fixed. Okay, I think I need to make you guys hosts. Okay. Um, that is part of it. Learning as we go. Or co-host, just a co-host. Um, oh, and then see if video works. I'm also here, Matthew, if you want to give me video. I see, I did, I co-host, okay, it's, my video is off, ask to start video. Ask to start video. Oh, there we go. There we go. Does that work? It says you can't start your video because the host has stopped it. Okay, that sounds fun. <laughs> yes. There we go. Now I'm. Now can you do? There it is. There we go. There. Hey, Kelly. Hey, guys. Um, we just, um, I think people will start coming in at 635, so in a minute, but um, yeah, great questions. We had 137 people that uh, listened to Mike talk, and he showed off the new technical classroom stuff. It was pretty impressive. Great. Yeah. Um, the way I'm just going to, I'm going to introduce um, both of you. Um, we have 30 minutes, but it's a second session, so it can run. It can run a little if people have great questions, but um, Sarah, start with you, and then Kelly, start with you, and it's just really about welcome families and, you know, um, talking about campus ministry and all the things, and uh, uh, just getting them excited about the year to come, and we'll answer some questions at the end, and that's it. Sounds good. That's it. Great. Oh, my God. Right now, it's just us. <laughs> All right. Hi, you can Fadia. see you can see folks coming in. Hi, Hi Sarah. Hey, Fadia. Hi. Yes. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. It looks like we have we have some folks. They're coming. Here they come. Right on. So we left a little bit of uh, buffer room. So we're starting at 640 oh, so okay. that I could jump jump back on. Yeah. Sounds good. Says, uh, Matthew, we have a, a question that just says, make sure everyone needs to know they need to refresh their browser when they switch sessions to get the launch button. That's, there you go. That is a good question. Good to know. Hope that we can figure that out. I don't know how to communicate. Ginny, I don't know if sending out an email to the group to let them know that. <laughs> I'm texting Elizabeth so she can remind people who are leaving the previous session to do okay. that. And I'll make a little note on the, on the site. Sounds good. To everybody that's joining, it looks like we figured, yeah, we're figuring it out. We got to refresh the browser. Chris Lee coming through. So we'll get started here in three minutes. We'll let the folks uh, leave in the last one. They pop on over. Um, we'll get started here in a second.
Uh, David, that's a great question. I will talk a little bit about uh, our service and the service requirements uh, that we have and um, the current parameters of service given COVID uh, in when I get into my presentation. So we'll just make sure everyone gets here. Sarah, it's Elizabeth. A couple questions that came in as well, and I'll carry those over when the time is right for you and for Kelly. Great, thanks. You're welcome. We're about 107 participants, so looks like the majority of everyone has found us well. Okay, good stuff. Um, thank you guys for finding out. No technical difficulties thus far. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, let me start my video so you can see me again. Um, uh, thank you guys for finding your way over to um, our first day, second session. Um, uh, this is a great one. Um, we have with us uh, uh, Sarah Brabeck, um, who's the Director of Service and Justice, um, and Kelly Barnes, who um, uh, works in campus ministry and is, is just one of the best people around. Uh, Guys, uh, I, I really appreciate it again for all of you guys being here. And I'm just, w without much ado again, um, I'm going to hand it off to Sarah. Great. Thanks for having us, Matthew. Uh, and welcome, everyone. I know you already got to spend some time with Dr. Wood, and so I'm sure he's given you a great introduction. Uh, but the Office of Service and Justice and Campus Ministry make up two-thirds of what Father McGarry uh, and the school, what we all refer to as the religious core. Uh, theology makes up the other third of these three programs that are kind of at the center of our mission as a school. And we work with all of our families. So regardless of religious tradition, um, wherever you come from, we look forward to and enjoy wa walking alongside you and helping form your sons into the men that you hope they will become and that they are already on their way to becoming. Um, these, uh, so the, the school, Matthew asked me to speak a little bit about the Jesuits, uh, overall. And so I'm not going to, your sons will have theology one and we'll get a good robust, uh, history of the Jesuits and intro to St. Ignatius, but just a little bit about, um, our immediate context, right? Jesuit high school is one of many Jesuit schools in uh, the U S there are 27 Jesuit, um, universities in the US um, and there are more than 60 Jesuit high schools secondary schools there are also recently um, more and more middle schools Jesuit middle school schools serving low-income families uh, making uh, Jesuit secondary education more accessible striving to find ways to uh, address um, educational inequality in this country um, and so uh, one of the things you will hear many, many times, and I'd be surprised if you didn't already hear Dr. Wood say, was that uh, we seek to form uh, young men for and with others. And that comes from a speech from Pedro Rupe in 1973. He was this uh, superior general of the Society of Jesus, the leader of all the Jesuits all around the country. And in that speech, he really helped um, refocus what Jesuit, uh, what the Society of Jesus, what the Jesuits were about. Um, and said that this education that we provide is education uh, to help young people be people who work for justice in the world, uh, justice that's really needed. Um, and not just young people who care about their neighbor, but who know how to ask critical questions um, and interrogate the world around them to make sure that um, people can have what they need to have a, a life that re uh, recognizes their dignity. Um, and Father Koldenbach, a later su uh, Superior General, would frame this as um, our, our programs that allow students to get in touch with the gritty reality of the world. Um, and that is what our service program is about, the Office of Service and Justice. If you are a returning family, um, that might be a new name for you. Uh, if you're coming for the first time, it's certainly a new name for you. Um, we used to be called the Christian Service Office. Um, after many years of conversation, we decided to shift the name to the Office of Service and Justice because it more accurately describes what we're already doing. So this isn't, um, our programming isn't just about doing service, doing charity work. It's about helping students uh, do that work, but also with an eye towards asking bigger questions around justice and engaging in advocacy where appropriate and just taking next steps into that interrogation and that questioning. 
Um, so all of these programs, right, are geared towards helping our students grow as those young men uh, for and with others and in the characteristics of the graduate at graduation. Those are those five things that we say all of our uh, graduates will be. So um, loving, committed to doing justice, intellectually competent, religious, and open to growth. And obviously different dimensions of the school experience get at those differently, but uh, in the Office of Servants and Justice and in campus ministry, uh, we really try to support you families in, um, in that work of helping your sons become uh, more and more deeply those characteristics. Um, so for freshmen, um, our service uh, programming is actually pretty limited. Um, it's pretty minimal and focused. Um, so to the question, do students, can students start working on it uh, in advance? There's no need to. It uh, happens in the context of their Theology 1 class. Um, we're still figuring out what that will look like this year, um, but it's, uh, in the past we've done a, a day of service together in the community. Each theology class goes out um, group by group and we divide up to about five different sites. Um, and in preparation for that, we gather and learn a little bit about um, uh, chronic hunger, right, uh, food insecurity in Sacramento and in the U.S., but then we go out to agencies that address food insecurity. Uh, and so it's trying to do those, those two things that I talked about, right, like doing direct service and meeting people in their immediate need, uh, but also then um, asking questions about why are people hungry, learning about food deserts, um, learning about different dimensions of um, who the, in, the uh, unequal access to food that people have and why some people are hungry or don't have enough food and why others do. Uh, and so just unpacking that a little bit and modeling for our students what we hope they will do for the rest of their time in their service experiences. Um, we are still, like I said, um, we're still figuring out what that will look like this year given um, the realities of COVID and the need to care for our student health. Um, but that will be unfolding and as we figure it out we will certainly let families know the rest of our students um, do in fact so after the freshman year students are welcome to begin their service um, in the summer and many of them do right now uh, we do have when we went to the digital learning days we uh, made the decision to um, stop all in-person service, which is the majority of what our students do. And we've been working with them now to think for those who want to continue engage in, engaging in service for credit, what does that look like? What does that mean? Um, because we do place a priority on that person-to-person -person interaction so that they can get in touch with the gritty reality of the world, as Father Kolvenbach said. Um, so we're still, again, in the process of figuring all of that out. But for right now, no students, um, just for their safety, can engage in any in-person service for uh, credit from Jesuit. Um, some other things that we do, right? We don't just do uh, service programming, um, though um, the sophomore and junior year, we work with students in the theology classroom as well. We also have an annual summit on human dignity. Um, and this is um, a, it's taken different formats, but uh, in the past has been a week long uh, dive into a particular topic uh, related to justice and human dignity. So this last year we focused on economic justice. Uh, in previous years, we've done environmental justice and um, racism. We've talked about doing an exploration of what does it mean to be a man, a young man in the 21st century, and what are the challenges and opportunities present. Um, we've done, uh, looked at immigration and general um, poverty and homelessness in Sacramento. So these are all different topics that we invite our students to really explore in greater depth. We bring speakers from lots of different um, local agencies, but also uh, nationally recognized speakers. We had the former um, president of Catholic Charities USA as our keynote speaker this year. Um, really great dynamic people. We had Bishop Soto as our keynote speaker a few years ago. So um, try to meet families, uh, meet students and their interests where they are. Um, and then finally, one of our um, one of the programs that our students enjoy the most that many of them um, is, has obviously been a disappointing summer, uh, but we have about um, 12 
uh, immersions that we run, domestic and um, international, uh, different service and uh, immersions that we run. And so uh, I'm not sure what those look like um, in the year ahead, uh, just given, again, the need to protect our students and protect the communities where we would be serving, many of which are um, you know, all of them are serving vulnerable populations. Um, and so, but those are week long um, overnight trips to different places like LA, we go to Skid Row, we go to San Francisco um, and go to the Tenderloin there. We do one right here in Sacramento. We go to um, a, like a Catholic worker type farm in West Virginia. Um, we go to a community, an intentional living community founded by a Jesuit high school alumnus in uh, Kansas City, where they do uh, rehabbing projects, home rehabbing projects for families who can't uh, otherwise afford them um, and live together simply in community for the week. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head where else we go. We go and stay with, uh, stay and live alongside and serve with uh, people, adults living with developmental disabilities in uh, a large community uh, in uh, Tacoma. So we have a lot of different uh, service opportunities that we run. And then we also work with Camp Recreation here based in the Sacramento Diocese uh, and send our students to uh, the week-long summer camps that they run where our students are partnered up with uh, campers and their 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 companion for the week and um, listening to the stories of our students coming back from camp and the ways that they are uh, really transformed by that partnership with their um, with their camp camper is uh, it's humbling and it's it's tremendously beautiful uh, to listen to a teenage boy talk about growing to care and love um, his camper and partnering with them through the week. Um, so those are, that's kind of the big overview of different things that we do. We also send students, we do different advocacy work. So uh, working with the, um, both the Ignatian Solidarity Network, which is a consortium of Jesuit uh, schools and affiliated institutions to, um, to, uh, they have advocacy programming both in DC and at the state level and local level. Um, we work with some other Jesuit high schools in the area to go to the Capitol and teach the students about how to engage in advocacy. And then um, the Catholic um, California Catholic Conference also has a youth advocacy day. It doesn't always align with our schedule, but we often look at the different issues that they're addressing and make sure that our students, if we're able to do advocacy, can address those as well. So I think that covers the the basics of what we do. Um, if there are any, it looks like I think I've addressed the questions that are there. Elizabeth, did you want to me to address questions now, or have Kelly give a give her? Let's portion? let's go. Um, uh, let's go to Kelly, uh, okay. Miss Kelly Barnes next, and then at the end, if any questions come through, guys, and you guys have any questions, um, we'll take some time at the end, um, and I can moderate a little question and answer session. Take it away, Kelly. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Kelly Barnes. I work in the campus ministry department, and um, I love, love, love what I get to do because um, I get to spend lots of time with the students. I also get to spend time with Ms. Brabeck. Um, she and I have worked together for many years. We were in the service program together for quite a while, and then I decided to put all my energy into the ministry uh, basket. Um, so, Ms. Brabeck, thank you. Your intro was great, and you actually touched on a couple things that I was going to incorporate one of the one of the things that I will touch on again is that that I call it like a three legged stool of theology service and justice and ministry and together with all those coming together we've got a really good balance. Um, that's all geared towards helping you guys figure out who you are who you're called to be and how you are going to get there. Um, and so the campus ministry part of that um, there's two main ways at uh, three uh, we'll say three. Um, that we interact with freshmen and then we continue um, through through the years. So I'm going to start off talking about something that some of you have probably heard about already. I know Mr. LaBeouf did a presentation um, last week and talked to some of you and brought in some of our recently graduated seniors. Um, but every freshman coming in will be given a big brother. And that is a senior student 
um, who has volunteered to give very generously of his time because he wants to be there for you in the way that someone else was there for him. Um, so we have 120-ish of our seniors have volunteered to be big brothers. That means that each one of them will have two or three freshmen as their little brothers. Um, and they will be there for you throughout the year, most especially as you're coming in on that orientation day, during the freshman retreat, as you're figuring out how the heck, if I, my locker can't get open, how am I gonna make this work? I don't know where my classes are. How does this whole lunch line thing work? They're there for all of that. Um, they, have, they have survived and thrived and they have it, they have it figured out. Um, so they're there to walk with you through that. And I'm really excited. I, I looked over the list of uh, big brothers earlier today and um, these are outstanding young men who were where you are now just a few short years ago. So they remember what it was like coming onto campus that first day, that first week, trying to figure stuff out. And, um, and their, their desire is to make your life easier and better. Um, again, each one will have two or three little brothers. So you'll be in kind of like a little pod and you'll get to know a couple of those other freshmen really well. And as we put you together, we often put you with other little brothers whose lockers are near yours. So these are people that you're gonna be like connecting with right off the bat. So if you don't know about anybody coming into Jesuit, don't worry about it, we got you covered. Um, the other thing that we do specifically for freshmen is the freshman retreat. And that is the second weekend uh, that school has begun. Um, if any of you have older brothers that have done the freshman retreat, um, hopefully they've told you how much fun it was, how great it was. This year, as we know, we're dealing with some health restrictions because of COVID. Um, so the seniors and Mr. LaBeouf and I have already been working really hard to take that, you know, what was a day and a half retreat, compact it, take the best parts of it and, uh, and put it into one outstanding day. Um, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, Mr. LaBeouf met with our senior leaders last week. I'm meeting with them again on campus this week. Um, so we are already putting things together for you uh, that are gonna just really help you discover that you're part of something much bigger than um, just a school. You're, you're part of, of our Jesuit Brotherhood. Um, and that I'm, I'm really excited about the freshman retreat this year. Another uh, thing that we do is um, through campus ministry, we have masses and prayer services. Um, and we are so blessed on our campus to have outstanding Jesuit priests. I know Sarah talked a little bit about the Jesuits and um, we just have some really kind, approachable, easy to talk to um, wise men who are here for you. Um, one of them actually was the principal when my husband was a student at Jesuit back in the 80s. And he's back as our alumni director. And to see him um, working with high school boys after all these years is pretty exciting. Another is our president, Father John McGarry, um, who is one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, and he was the principal when my oldest son started at Jesuit. So I was a Jesuit mom before I was a Jesuit employee. And um, I, I will always remember the first mass I went to was, was my oldest son's, the first mass at Jesuit was my oldest son's orientation mass said by Father McGarry. And as he closed the mass, he said to the freshmen, welcome to Jesuit high school. I hope your time here brings you closer to God. And as he said that, I heard it for me too. I was there, you know, as a freshman mom, I'm all excited to have my little Jesuit shirt on and stuff, right? He was welcoming the freshmen, but he was welcoming all of us. So I understand there might be some parents on this call. Um, just know that like this faith journey that your son is going to be continuing, that's hopefully gonna flourish, you're invited along as well. Um, it really is what uh, kind of transformed my life. Um, my, I was a couple years into being a Jesuit mom when um, I felt the, the nudge to become a Jesuit employee. And um, I think, Maybe there's no better way to tell you students about what, it, what it's like to be with campus ministry service and, and uh, theology than to share the story of my, my boys. So I have two boys that went to Jesuit. My husband first graduated in the 80s. And so there was never really much question that, that our boys were destined for Jesuit. So when they got in, it was a happy day. Um, they both went through Jesuit and they really were impacted um, through the service program. They volunteered with Special Olympics. They volunteered at Loves and Fishes. They each went on one of the service immersions. Back then we were going to a um, Indian reservation in um, uh, North, uh, South, South Dakota. And um, it, it opened their eyes uh, to people with very different lives um, than they had lived thus far. And um, as a really healthy 
good uh, developmental thing to do. Um, their theology classes were amazing. Um, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to look at the course list yet, but they had things like ethics and morality and social justice. Um, my son Josh's favorite class, out of all the classes he took at Jesuit, his favorite class was world religions. And he got to study the different religions of the world and came to the conclusion that, yeah, lots of the details are different, but lots of the foundations are the same. Like we all love a good and loving God who wants the best from us. Um, so they, they really, my boys got to discover who they were at Jesuit uh, through service, through theology, and also through campus ministry. I mentioned the freshman retreat. We have a sophomore retreat that is led, our, our retreats are student led. And that's one of the things I love about them is I work in campus ministry, but my main role is training our senior students to lead you guys on your retreats. Um, so your sophomore retreat, the theme is the man that God is calling me to be. The junior retreat takes that a step deeper and looks at the choices you're making and how they're bringing you closer to being that man, how they affect the relationships that you have. And then senior year is uh, the capstone, the Kairos retreat. Um, so through those experiences, my boys really got to figure out who they are. And it's pretty cool to get to tell you that, that both of my sons, one graduated in 2007, one in 2010, but they both chose to go into a life of service, very different manifestations. One is a Black Hawk helicopter pilot for the United States Army, service. The other is a campus minister and a theology teacher at a Jesuit high school up in Tacoma, Washington. And it just so happens that one of the classes he teaches is world religions, which was his favorite class at Jesuit. So um, it, it really does show you that um, as you come in with different gifts and desires and abilities, you can find your path. We're not gonna push you down one particular role and, and put out cookie cutter product at the end, right? You guys are, are created by God with a, with a unique path set before you. And we get to walk along with you as you discover that. So that's what I love about ministry and service and theology. Um, and, and your extracurriculars too are gonna be infused with that. Many of your activities are gonna start with a prayer. I happen to be the chaplain for the band. And during band camp, I go over each morning and, and uh, pray with the students, you know, for a successful day at band camp and things like that. So um, it's, it's just a real privilege. And I'm appreciative, appreciative Matthew, uh, that you invited Sarah and I to be here today. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Um, I think what you said there at the end, right, it's um, whether it's in the band or um, on the football team. It's just this infusion of, of togetherness and brotherhood and um, um, the learning that comes out of that. Um, so uh, it looks like there was a couple audio issues out there. I, I think it might've been individual things. These are all recorded. And um, un unfortunately, if it, if it cut out, we will have them available. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and it did, um, um, Kelly, you did uh, address the, the freshman overnight, but it sounds like it mean it's not going to be an overnight. Like we've had to We've had to like this welcome event. We've had to reimagine um, our events, and so um, it's it's condensing and creating the the same environment as best we can through all of our events. So um, maybe a little bit a little bit different this year, but still a great a great experience to to meet the folks that uh, make this place go. Um, it looks like um, I have a question for for Sarah. Uh, how do boys apply for off-site ministry trips? How are they selected? What are the qualifications? Okay. Uh, so if I'm imagining this question is about the immersions for um, our senior, rising seniors, if that's not the case, about, well, I'll just say that there are no other um, service opportunities that we have that um, require a, um, like a, an application. Um, we have programs that we run that we ask students to kind of give us their interests. Um, and that's really the direction we've actually gone in the past few years with the immersion program as well. So, um, in the past, we, um, we had to often create a wait list for our immersion program. Um, since the time that I've, um, I've been running the program. I've worked really hard to make sure that we have places for all of our students um, if they're interested in them. So while we do have um, 
an application process. It's really primarily geared towards getting the students um, interests like the, the profile of what they're interested in learning about and the type of service that they're interested in doing and the questions that they have. Um, and so we take a, we get a whole bunch of um, their responses to different questions and prompts. Um, and then we also, we do screen with um, the Dean's office to make sure that they, there are no behavior issues that we should be aware of. Um, going on an overnight trip is a serious responsibility. Um, and our faculty are really generous in giving their time. And so we want uh, to make sure that we're going to have students who can respect the, the parameters that would be set out on an overnight, um, often um, airfare involved or flight involved distance. Um, and so we do always check with the Dean's office, um, have faculty give input students that the, or faculty that the students ask to give input about who they are and what they're like and what their personalities are, just so we can build a nice group of students who can have um, a really deep, enriching, challenging learning experience together. Um, so I'd be happy to answer more questions about any of that um, it, by email. I see that that's someone who's anonymous. So I, um, whoever you are, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to say, to say more. But really, we're just looking for maturity. Um, and we, we also do check to make sure that the student has completed all of his service previously, right? So a history of not doing his service um, on time or doing it at all would be a red flag for us that maybe this isn't a, an opportunity that they're quite mature enough or ready for yet. And, and that's, there's no judgment there. That's just kind of, we work with the families and have a conversation. Great stuff. Um, it, there was another question there um, that went away. It, we are not um, about losing the freshman. We're not losing the freshman orientation. Uh, there will be a freshman orientation. Yes, Kelly. It will just be um, um, a little bit different experience um, with everything that's going on. Um, but outside of that, um, meeting, um, again, that relationship with the big brother um, and communicating, um, um, whether that's uh, done on campus or offline, uh, I imagine we're going to um, create those relationships so they know who they are um, and our orientations. There's um, plenty of opportunities um, for all of our freshmen students. I don't want to speak out of turn for them to get um, know their big brother and experience um, what Jesuit is right as as they come on to campus. Does that make is that is that sound right? Am I on part, Kelly? Right? Yes. Yes. And as we are reimagining and reworking that freshman retreat, we are abs we are placing a priority on the connecting, the, the activities that bring connection. So for example, uh, there was one activity where we used to go out and do a canned food drive, a canned food collection in the neighborhood and such. And while that was great, it was fun, it was helping the community and things like that, um, as we looked at the activities that we were going to continue to include, that was one that, that we're going to set aside for this year so that we can focus on having the students together in the classroom, in small groups, sharing, getting to know each other better and such. One other thing I, I forgot to mention, I'd written it in my little notes. Um, when we do the Big Brother training, it's the Sunday before school starts. So I believe that's August 8th or 9th, uh, whatever that Sunday is. Um, the, your Big Brother, all freshman guys, your Big Brother is going to be calling you on that day to introduce himself and say, hey, I'm your Big Brother, here's my number. Like, I'm gonna meet you on your orientation day. Here's how this is gonna work and such please answer your phone. It's so common and I, and I get it because I don't like to answer if it's an unknown number either. But on that Sunday before school starts, middle of the day around lunchtime, if you get a phone call and it's an unknown number, it's very likely going to be your big brother. So answer the phone, okay? Or make sure that you at least have your voicemail set up so that he can leave you a message and you can call him back because he really wants to connect with you before school starts. I think that's going to help to have like a friendly voice and and he can tell you you know i look like this and i'll be waiting for you here and that kind of stuff for questions from online matthew if i can ask go for it okay so sarah um, we had two questions come in online while we've been talking one asked the question what's the social summit? And I think they mean, what's the social justice summit? And the other question was, I'm not Catholic, so how do I connect to other members of my faith? So great, great questions. So um, the social justice summit, uh, we've, uh, 
shifted the name of that just uh, to the Summit on Human Dignity, which ca sort of better captures the work that it is about. Um, and it has been a week-long um, gathering of um, different speakers. We bring speakers from off campus to address different topics. So that's what I was mentioning when I said we've done different presentations um, on economic justice and environmental justice and racism and immigration. Um, so those we bring uh, professionals uh, dealing with those issues in the community to campus to speak for our students so that our students can get a deeper understanding of those issues uh, as they are at work in the world. And Kelly, do you want to take the question on? Yeah. Oh, you're muted. There we go. Okay. Um, so for students of other faiths, we do have um, a Jewish a Jewish student union. So there's a club on campus for our Jewish students and those who want to learn more about um, the Jewish students, so you don't have to be Jewish to join. Um, and then also through your theology teacher or through the campus ministry program, if you want to come to us and say, hey, I'm Sikh and I'd love to know, like, are there any other freshmen that are Sikh or something like that? I have access to that in, um, in a database and um, would be happy to help you connect. Um, I do, it is a great opportunity for me to, to tell you that our senior leaders uh, for all the retreats and such do not have to be Catholic, do not have to be Christian. They have to have a faith life. And, um, and through their faith life, then they encourage you in your faith life, whatever that tradition may be. Um, but yes, if you are of another faith and, and want to connect with some other students, um, just come see me in the campus ministry office and I can look up that information and help you get connected. Great stuff. It looks like we have two more questions. I don't want to keep everybody all night long, but um, are the dates already set for the orientation day and the freshman retreat? I know with the shifts and everything, are they set in stone? Or are we still working on dates for everything? Uh, it's my understanding that the dates are set, that freshman orientation is, is going to be on the Thursday. I don't have my calendar in front of me here. Yeah. Um, so whatever that Thursday is. And the freshman retreat will be the, a week from that Saturday, which is, Sarah, do you have a calendar? Yeah, have a yeah calendar? so I think you're saying it's Thursday, August 13th, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then it's a mm -hmm. week from the first Saturday, Kelly. So yes. August, th uh, Saturday, August 22nd would be the- Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Should have grabbed my calendar. So yes, uh, as well, at, insofar as it's in our control, those dates are set. Um, should the county or the state or something uh, put something forth that, that we weren't able to gather on those days, then it would be up to administration to make a change. But as of now, those are the dates that you should plan to be on campus for your orientation. Then the first day of classes is that very next day, that Friday. You can get a nice little weekend to figure things out, go buy some new binders and such. Um, and then that, that next Saturday will be the freshman retreat. So we do ask you to please, please, please keep that day free. Um, we want you, we need you, you need to be at the freshman retreat. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna bring you into the community in a beautiful way. So don't, so don't make plans that day. Don't go out of town. Awesome. Um, I have one here. Um, it's, uh, we, we haven't, um, we haven't been able to get back in touch with my son's big brother. His big brother left a message and my son called back and texted him, but we haven't heard back. What should we do? I believe, um, Kelly, was that the, the senior retreat team boys that reached out? So um, that isn't his big brother um, per se, but we did um, have the senior retreat team um, boys reach out um, and say hello. So some of you may have received a call already from some seniors that are excited to have you guys here. So um, you, that wasn't your big brother. That was our senior retreat team, which is another great group of uh, seniors and leaders on campus. Um, you'll be hearing from, I would keep trying, maybe text them again. <laughs> um, um, they, I know they're very, um, it's summertime, they're engaged and active, but um, um, if available, I'm sure they'll, they'll reach back uh, if possible. Um, I, are big brothers matched at random or based on common interest activities? It's a good question. They're mostly mar matched at random, and that is to broaden your exposure to the student body in general. Um, if we only put baseball guys with baseball big brothers and uh, the robotics guys with robotics big brothers, um, you wouldn't be exposed to some of the other great things that are happening on campus. Um, we also don't put like if you would email and say, oh, my next door neighbor's a senior. I really want him as my big brother. Your next door neighbor's a senior. That's awesome. He is, he's there for you. He's on your side. 
he wouldn't be the best big brother for you because now you're missing out on getting to know somebody else with a whole other range of interests and friends. And so you're going to have double, double the connections if your cousin or your brother's best friend or somebody is a senior. So we do those uh, at random. Um, and, but we do screen the big brothers, um, as Ms. Brabeck talked about. Um, we run those names by the dean's office just to make sure that um, these guys are, obviously they're giving generously of their time to be there and mentor you, but we also wanna make sure that they have a pattern of making really good decisions and being good role models for you. So as parents, just know that like, these are good guys. Awesome stuff. And um, this last question um, is not free, I can address it. Um, it was about, um, um, it's a good segue going in just to remind folks um, about, um, let me pull it back up, um, about being on campus all day. Yes, that was a question um, that, that uh, uh, Principal Wood addressed in last session, but just a reminder that the Thursday communications will address those, um, those everybody's curiosity about next year and the things to come. We're I know everybody's working really hard. It's awesome to see everybody collaborating and being involved. Um, all, the, all my colleagues are working hard to make sure that um, we are uh, getting back, in, a bit back on campus and providing opportunities for your sons to excel and have, a, um, have the experience that I had. I was a marauder myself in 2005. So um, that being said, I do um, 714. I'd love to wrap it up. It looks like um, we still have 105 people. Vote. So I would just say that tomorrow's session um, is going to be a great one. And I'd say if there's some families that maybe didn't join tonight and you wanted to uh, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, you want to hear from some folks tomorrow um, at from 6 to 630. Um, we have our visual and performing arts uh, folks, our director of visual and performing arts, uh, 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 Leah Heine. And um, we also have Ed Trafton and John Cargill. Um, um, our band director and our drama director. Um, awesome, awesome gentlemen. They're going to talk about um, all things um, visual and performing arts. And then the second session um, is going to be with uh, Colin O'Connor, who is our assistant principal for academics. So we'll talk a bit um, about academics and some of the things to come and expectations for students moving forward. Um, but at this time, I want to thank um, everybody again. Kelly, Sarah, thank you for being here. A lot of great information. And I look forward to seeing everybody uh, tomorrow and for all the sessions to come. So thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Visit the website and our social media. We'll make sure that we keep all of you informed. No question is a bad question. You can send them in. Great. Awesome. Thanks, guys.